I ended up traveling to Poland uh, to do this little six week, six week, six day um, retreat in the middle of winter in this tiny little Polish village, uh, learning all about the Wim Hof method. And we were doing all the crazy stuff that Wim does, you know, swimming in the ice water, hiking around in our snow, barefoot in our shorts. It's you know, minus three degrees outside Celsius. Um, you know, climbing the tallest mountain in Poland in our shorts, minus 19 degrees at the top, you know, having a pretty wild time. Um, but what was so interesting for me, even though all the cold stuff sounds the most kind of exciting and kind of bizarre, um, it was the breath work that really took me. That was Richie, the breath guy. Hey everybody, welcome back to Seeker and Sage. We are at episode 150 and I've got Richie, also known as the breath guy from London on the show. He is, uh, he's actually a person that has been in orbit in my world for about a year now. Uh, our friends over at uh, Fiercecom, hey Fiercecom, uh, introduced us, well kind of, you know, we've, we've heard each other's names through them and uh, I was finally able to get him on the show. As you know, the show is continuing to grow and change more than just yoga, but these other tools and approaches to really help better our lives. And I have to tell you, I recently got his book and it's quite phenomenal. I mean, there's always a yoga approach to breathing and why it's good for you and you know, breath is life. But the way that he's got this information and synthesize it um, for his own practice is, is quite uh, cool. And it's also, he's just got a really great voice as well. He sounds super good. Um, when he guides us through this. You definitely want to stick around to the end of the show because we do a, a breathing exercise uh, together. Um, so it was pretty fun to, uh, to experience. And uh, just before we get into the show, I want to invite everybody to head down to the uh, show notes and join us in the Facebook uh, collective. So we are starting to dive a little deeper into some of the conversations that we're having here on the show. Uh, we'll be connecting our podcast there. And yeah, just all things, you know, for the seekers and sages will be living there. So go over, hang out, start a conversation with me, start a conversation with anybody else. And uh, you can always find the podcast inside the Danny Pomplune Yoga app as well. I'll make sure that I leave it down in the show notes and it's in the free version, but you can have it right there in your fingertips. If you don't want to do any of those things, all good. Head to iTunes, leave us a review and uh, show us some love. Without further ado, here goes Richie, the breath guy. Richie, I feel like, uh, well, I mean, I don't know you know you because this is really the only time we've ever spoken, but I've heard so much about you through a few different channels of people. So I feel like I know you. <laughs> oh, wow. That's brilliant. I mean, you know, our, our good friends at Fierce Calm are always talking about you and just how wonderful you are and the things you do. So it's such a pleasure to be able to finally connect. Lies, fairy tales, and fallacies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> Welcome to 2020. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Funny enough, I actually, um, you know, I was, I was, well, I was supposed to be in London um, again this year, and obviously, um, I, I'm not. Um, but I, I, last year while I was there, I tried tracking you down, um, and I want to say it was. Maybe it was like the Lululemon event or something like that. You were going to be somewhere and I just didn't have time to go. Uh, but I was hanging out with Lee and we were talking about you. And he's like, you got to go experience this guy, Richie, the breath guy. Everyone knows him out here and your work is pretty cool. So I tried hunting you down last year and I didn't get to you. Oh, I'm sneaky. What can I say? <laughs> you're on my list. I'm coming for you, Richie. <laughs> so Richie, you're, uh, you're, I, you know, I, I love, um, I mean, obviously we have a lot of yoga teachers on the show. It's just mm -hmm. natural, right? Um, but I love that you work on the breath side. You know, I, I'm used to calling it pranayama. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, like how, how, what, when, where, and why? Mm. And you know, it's really funny, right? Because when I tell people, oh, I teach people about breath work or how to breathe, they go, oh yeah, you know, I do yoga and, and uh, we sometimes do some breathing in that. And I go, that's really good. But you know, actually I don't have a traditional yoga um, training or background at all. Um, mm -hmm. I came through, I came into breath work really, uh, by accident or fate. If you, uh, if you would like to, um, look at it for that way, um, yep. really through trying to help my dad. So mm -hmm. my dad years ago was diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and, uh, like all, um, autoimmune, autoimmune diseases, it's one of those things that doesn't necessarily have a 
set treatment or cure. You know, it's not like you sure. can take a course of antibiotics and it disappears. It's something that often stays with people for a lifetime. And so I was looking for ways to be able to help my dad, whether it was lifestyle changes, dietary changes, alternative therapies, you know, really anything at all. And it was through my hunting and searching that I came across this guy called Wim Hof. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Iceman. And yeah. uh, he's pretty well known these days. Um, but just in case um, anyone who's listening doesn't know who he is, he's this pretty crazy Dutch guy. And he's called the Iceman because he holds over 20 world records all related to cold exposure. So things like swimming under ice for the longest distance. Um, he nearly summited Everest just wearing shorts and hiking boots and nothing else. Uh, yeah, he's a bit nuts, you know. <laughs> On a um, Friday, you know, that, that's yeah, one Yeah, <laughs> pretty standard. And, um, you know, so he kind of got famous because he could do all these, these cold uh, stunts. And it was through his training that he eventually developed something which he very originally called the Wim Hof Method, which is a combination of cold exposure exercises and then also breathing techniques um, that not only is good for learning how to deal with cold, but um, is actually just really great for everyone's general health and well-being. Mm -hmm. And why this caught my attention was because uh, on the specific interview, he was talking about how it seems that it's really useful for people who have autoimmune problems. Mm. where people who develop a practice in this method eventually start to see um, sometimes even a complete regression of symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I ended up traveling to Poland uh, to do this little six-week, six-week, six-day um, retreat in the middle of winter in this tiny little Polish village uh, learning all about the Wim Hof method. And we were doing all the crazy stuff that Wim does, you know, swimming in the ice water, hiking around in our snow, barefoot in our shorts. It's you know, minus three degrees outside Celsius, um, you know, mm -hmm. climbing the tallest mountain in Poland in our shorts, minus 19 degrees at the top, you know, having a pretty wild time. Um, but what was so interesting for me, even though all the cold stuff sounds the most kind of exciting and kind of bizarre, um, it was the breath work that really took me where we would go into the basement of the hotel we were staying and do these breathing routines for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and really just have these incredible experiences, things that I didn't know were possible um, just by breathing. And um, anyway, to cut a long story short, bringing the, I went back home and brought the technique back to my dad and he started doing it every day, um, cold showers every day, breathing every day. And, you know, we're fast forward to where we are now, years down the track, and the progression of his MS has completely stopped from that day. So wow. it was pretty yeah. powerful stuff and a real, obviously very impactful for my dad and our family. Um, and it, there's, it yep. Go, there's been a whole like movement with, you know, I, I mean, there, there's a couple of people that I've, I've naturally have bumped into in the world um, with, with Wim Hof method and they've kind of taken their own little spins on it and creating their own little, I guess, like micro communities through it. Um, and it, it's, it, it seems like it's really, uh, it's not only super impactful, but also the community that's, that goes behind it is super thick. Yeah. Well, I think what happens is whenever you share in a powerful or impactful experience with a group of people, it, it really bonds you and mm -hmm. pulls you together, you know, and that can be something that's super blissful. Um, it could be something that's very challenging, like mm -hmm. jumping in an ice bath together, for example, um, you know, and it can be um, things even tougher than that, you know, if, if trauma brings people together, interestingly. So, right. you know, there's lots of different reasons why. And I think when you start to go into some of these you know, slightly altered states that particularly breath work can take you in, um, where you start to lose the barriers of separateness and separation, um, and start to perhaps go into certain states of awareness where you feel unity and you feel wholeness with everyone around you. Um, you know, you can't, it's, it's a bit tricky in COVID times, but usually by the end of a breathwork session, everyone just wants to hug each other, you know, <laughs> everyone wants to just hold right, right. each other and celebrate. Um, so, so yeah, I guess that's probably why. How did you, I mean, I guess, you know, in, in current times, how are you working? I mean, I know you have an app now, which is kind of cool. 
Yeah, yeah. It's all moved online. And, you know, I, so I don't teach Wim Hof method anymore. It was the first thing that I did learn. But, um, you know, after I, I started doing that, I just became obsessed with breath work and what were the other possibilities and potentials for breathing. So mm -hmm. I traveled around the world for um, nearly four years, about three and a half years, learning from all sorts of different people, whether they were breath work masters, yogis, um, psychologists, researchers, athletic coaches, physiotherapists, doctors, all sorts of interesting people um, learning about what's possible with the breath. And uh, so I guess what I share now is my own little take or flavor on it, um, but it doesn't incorporate ice baths. So that's kind of easy, <laughs> which means that everyone can follow along in a breathing session online. And it's been pretty um, amazing actually to see uh, how impactful it can still be even through digital means. Those ice baths, man, I, I just can't get behind it. <laughs> I mean, I take, <laughs> I take cold showers every day. I kind of like, I fell off for a little bit just because I fell off for a little bit, but I take the cold showers every day for a couple of minutes and I, it's just suffering the entire time. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's the, that's the trick with it. You know, they, they don't really get easier. Um, they don't. The <laughs> they don't. You think I'm going to get used to it, but they don't get easier. <laughs> So what can people, you know, when they, when they do a breath session, you know, with you, what can people expect? Like, what is, what is the experience like that you offer? So, you know, breath work, it's a very broad scope of work, actually. You know, if you, the way I define it is really any time that you become aware of your breathing and then start to change it to create some sort of physical, mental, or emotional benefit for yourself. And that's a very broad definition. So if we kind of look on a spectrum, in its most simplest form, it might be learning a breathing technique that can quickly change your state within 30 seconds to a minute when you're feeling stressed or when you're feeling angry or if you're feeling tired and you need to create energy. So you know these almost little breath hacks that you can use uh, mm -hmm. throughout your day. And then you go a little bit further along the spectrum and you have your more dedicated uh, breathwork practices. So we look at things like pranayam, uh, Wim Hof method, qigong, um, you know, all these sorts of uh, more dedicated practices where you're sitting or sometimes standing or lying down and, you know, really focusing on your breath for 10, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever. Um, and then you can go even further along the spectrum and use the breath quite profoundly and intensely for maybe an hour, hour and a half to create some really impactful experiences where people experience great emotional healing and sometimes even transcendental experiencing or exploration. Um, so it really depends kind of what we're doing in the session. You know, I, right. I'll go into corporates, for example, and teach people all about how to regulate their nervous system using the breath. And then I'll go into, um, uh, maybe a meditation studio and use it as similar to like a yoga class as a 30 minute way to kind of reset the body in all the different ways and start to change how they think and how, the, how people think and how they feel um, just by using the breath alone. And then sometimes we'll do very, very deep sessions where we're all going on a deep journey together um, to experience something new. So it sort of depends. Um, but at the end of the day, you're always going to be feeling great afterwards. That's the important thing. I remember the first time I did an actual like breath, uh, breath experience uh, with a teacher here in San Francisco. And we did this like combination, you know, he, he kind of made his own thing, but it was like a combination of like helotropic breathing and then some other pranayama. And I just remember being like, I was done and I felt like I was on drugs. Mm. <laughs> it's really thought, funny. Yeah. It's quite often you have, I remember just uh just before the lockdown happened i was teaching a workshop and one guy was doing it for the first time i think he was uh in his he must have been in his uh early 60s or something like that and then he sits up after the session he looks at me and he goes i haven't felt like this since i was in my 20s doing acid <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> like and it's just getting high in your own supply my friend yeah, it's kind of it's it's kind of incredible what you know, it's so potent and so powerful. Uh, breath for me didn't come until later on down the line in yoga practice. I mean, you know, we do ujjayi breathing like mm. at the start of, you know, ashtanga, like that was that was a thing, but I never started to go into 
the other elements of the pranayama until way, 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 way later on. And then naturally, of course, you know, I did my own digging and, you know, teaching trainings and whatnot. You kind of have to be able to speak to some of it. But I never really realized how potent and how important uh, the breath is. And you can do so much with it. Like, it's incredible. That's what people are starting to understand and wake up to now. It's like, it's like our body's very own built-in Swiss army knife. And right. here we have something that we can use for so many different reasons. And it can be in its, yeah, like we kind of said, in its simplest form, just in a moment, changing your state very, very quickly, even though you, you know, you have an absolutely no reason to feel relaxed at all because you have a deadline or maybe a client is hassling you or something like that. You know, just by changing the way that you breathe, you make massive shifts in your nervous system, therefore allowing you to perform better, to be able to re react in a way that creates a better outcome for everybody. Um, but yeah, like you said, you know, my dad, you know, he he uses it because he's been able to overcome this autoimmune condition, you know, mm -hmm. and there's plenty of other medical conditions as well that simply by changing your breath, you can make massive strides towards uh, a recession of symptoms and sometimes even full recovery. Uh, you know, athletes, um, you know, it's becoming a bigger and bigger part of athletic uh, training to start to really pay attention to the breath and how you can use it almost like a gear system to be able to make sure that you're serving your cells metabolically uh, in order to be able to perform better. Uh, so it's really fascinating to see how all these different people are taking this one thing that we all do called the breath and are applying it to all their different specialities. And it's a, it's a really exciting future because it's just breathing. You know, once you know how to, to do the technique or have the experience, then it's there for you for life and it doesn't cost a thing until they start taxing us for clean air. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it will eventually. Without, you know, I, I mean, and this is going to sound a little, uh, without dumbing this down and you know, there's so much more to it. I'm sure we can go into like mm. 10 episodes on just different breath alone, but if you were to kind of give us the easiest description of like the science behind it and what's actually happening, help us understand, you know, what's really going on when we're doing some of these practices. Sure. Well, you know, the simplest way to put it is that the way that we breathe is so intimately linked to our nervous system, which really controls everything that happens in our body. Um, it means that we have a direct gateway to be able to influence this nervous system uh, mm -hmm. to determine what's going to happen. Now, the breath also influences your cardiovascular system. It also influences things like your metabolism, your endocrine system, that's your hormones. Um, you know, it, it really affects every single system in the body. So once you kind of understand the formula as to what does what with the breath, then you have you know, you can start to get really creative about how you can use the breath in different ways. So, you know, a certain way of breathing actually helps to decrease inflammation in the body, for example. Um, a certain way of breathing will start to um, expand your blood vessels. Another way will contract them. Uh, a certain way of breathing will push your body into a slight elevated stress response or an activated uh, response where it makes you ready to do something, whether it's to um, get ready for competition or even to really focus on a task. Or if you're too stimulated, use the breath to relax you. So how do you use the breath to turn down um, that fight or flight response and move more into a parasympathetic relaxation and restoration response? So it's really all about testing and understanding, oh, what does what? And then you can start to get really creative with it. Yeah. You've got like a plethora of tools just with the, like, what do you, how do you want to not hack the body, but use the body to help facilitate whatever it is you're trying to do or work on? Yeah. You know, get in tune with the body's innate um, healing systems. You know, they, the amount of times where people who have gone through the traditional medical systems and have tried everything for various chronic issues. And then you introduce the breath and all of a sudden they start to see physical symptoms disappear. They're experiencing greater, um, you know, quality of life, more happiness and, and, and more comfort in themselves just by breathing. And that's such an empowering thing because it's them. They're doing it to themselves. There's no magic pills, no magic potions. It's just using the magic that's already within. Right. Yeah. I, I would, 
I would guess that a lot of people don't really breathe correctly on a day to day. You know, what I notice and what I see a lot of is people have really short breath. They're not really taking, you know, full capacity. Actually, funny enough, on on Tuesday this this week, I had to go to a pulmonary specialist. I've had this weird random. Long story short, I had this weird random cough for a little while. My cough is okay. Uh, but you know, as I was, I was in there, I did, you know, they, they make you do like the blast test, right? So mm. you have to inhale really big without, um, without having a little break in the, a break in the breath. And then they make you blast it out. And so what she was measuring, I guess, was the capacity of my lungs and how much air I was pulling in. Mm-hmm. And I thought that I was breathing really shallow. I thought that, no, yeah, like I normally don't breathe like fully, like I'm not really too... I don't consciously would say go every day into my breath unless I'm doing like pranayama work or in a yoga practice. And so I was expecting the results to be a little bit lower. And she's like, yeah, you're running at about 112 capacity. So you're doing great, (laughs) which is great to hear. But I feel like I don't think most people breathe deep or really use even just an everyday breath. What I find is that a lot of people are breathing really short and really shallow. Absolutely. And, you know, because you you have that awareness of your breath and that when someone says, okay, take the deepest breath that you can and then exhale with force, you'll know how to do it in an optimal way because you have that training. Um, but what would be more interesting is if when you're not concentrating on your breath, what is happening? Because like you said, you know, you're so right. Most people day to day don't really think too much about how they are breathing. And there are so many reasons why our breath can be less than optimal. Um, Many, many people, I would probably say about 80, let's say 85% of the people I work with or see um, in my classes or workshops um, will have some form of breathing pattern disorder or dysfunction. Um, And that might be, and it ranges from being, you know, just something that could be a little bit better to, wow, things really need to change because you are severely affecting your physical health and your mental health and your emotional well-being by not breathing correctly. Um, and you're right. You know, we, most of us will breathe higher up into the chest using secondary breathing muscles that are not designed to be used all the time. Um, they, they are designed to be used when we are in our stress response or when we are exercising in order to be able to ventilate quicker, to be able to bring air in faster and to expel air faster. But if you use these all the time, it's actually not useful for your health at all. And many people just get stuck in these habits of breathing that way for all sorts of reasons, whether it's just chronic stress, whether it's very kind of innocuous things that you wouldn't think of things like wearing tight trousers or tight pants, jeans, um, shirts, dresses, skirts, you know, that restrict your abdomen from being able to be, uh, to, to inflate properly or to descend for the diaphragm to descend. Um, things like, uh, physical traumas, you know, if, if a very common one is if you've ever broken a rib, the body mm-hmm. learns to be able to breathe in a way so that you're not breathing into the lowest parts of your lungs. Or if, if you've had a surgery or have digestive issues where you have pain, you know, you might not be breathing deeply for that reason. Um, the one very big one is emotional trauma because mm-hmm. when the nervous system doesn't feel safe, it will also result in a breathing pattern that is much higher up in the chest um, and up into the neck, even the clavicle area. So, you know, all sorts of different reasons. And, you know, even if you didn't learn a single breathing technique per se, but just started to become aware of your breathing throughout the day, and it doesn't need to be all the time and incessantly thinking about it, but just noticing how it changes depending on where you are, what you're doing, how you're feeling, who you're with. And there might be some interesting insight there for you. Hmm. You've taken all of this and put it into a book, actually. That happened this year. It did. Yeah, it came. Congratulations, Richie, wrote a book. (laughs) Thank you so much. Yeah, and what a kind of, to be honest, strange time to release a book. It's it's a bit wild. You know, you have a, you know, like a a world tour plan and stuff and to to meet lots of people and try and, you know, share the good word and and then that all goes down the toilet quite quickly. Yeah, um, but people, you know, people are still, I'm sure people still really need it right now. More than ever. And yeah. um, I've really been so happy with um, how it's been received. And it really does, you know, try to take every, all the things that we've been talking about uh, at a high level today and, and, and really 
put more meat on the bone, so to speak, or um, what's the equivalent for the vegans? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what's it? More more lentils in the dal. Um, uh, <laughs> that works. <laughs> um, you know, and um, to to really try and create this map of the territory that is breath work because it really is such a broad spectrum of work. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I wanted to do was to create a book um, that was it was the book I wish I first had when I began my breathwork journey that answers all, answers all the questions and gives me the things that I need to know to get started. And then also the direction once I kind of feel this breathwork thing and I know what I like and what interests me, what are the directions that I can go down to find more information and to really build up my expertise in a certain area. So yeah, it's, it's, it, it in, incorporates how to assess your day-to-day breathing so to see if you're even doing it right and provides um, multiple ways to be able to improve it, whether it's through stretching or breathing exercises. Um, and then it also provides kind of like a cookbook or a recipe book of all these different breathing techniques that you can use uh, for different situations and different scenarios. So yeah, I really, I really do hope that it, it, uh, it's useful and can help a lot of people. Is there a chapter in there for uh, what recipe to use for 2020? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the whole mental health chapter, I think. Um, you know, but it, it kind of covers the obvious ones like stress and sleep and um, how to create energy, for example. But some of the other perhaps lesser known uses for breathing, like how to quit smoking or how to make better decisions, um, how to have better sex, you know, all sorts yeah. of different ways where the breath is definitely applicable. <laughs> I, I, I still, I, one, I haven't picked up the book yet. I need to. Um, I'm de- it's definitely like one of the things that I've been, I've been thinking um, about recently. I just feel like I have a stack of books that I've been saying I'm going to read for the last year. <laughs> you have but, to finish all your books first before you buy mine. Cause I, I, know, I know. of that, you know, you, you just, you have the best intention. You want to learn everything and then you just get overwhelmed by <laughs> the stack of books that's about to fall on top of you as you fall asleep. Listen, if there's a breathing exercise for me to read books faster, I'm in. <laughs> you know what? I bet I could create one. I bet there's a way to do it. I need to, I need to look into the science. <laughs> Sign me up for two, man. <laughs> Well, Richie, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be a full episode, I think, unless I I had you, you know, and had you guide us, you know, me, the listeners uh, through through some of this so that we can experience it uh, together, even, you know, even here on this recorded session. So if you wouldn't mind, let's do a little little taste of the Richie. I've been uh, so happy to. And you know what? Um, since we were talking about books, as soon as you brought it up, I just started thinking about it, and I was like, "What could I do to help to help uh, to read?" And you know, I do have this little routine that I use for focus, so maybe maybe that could be good. Um, so this little routine that I'm going to share with you now and guide you through. So it'll take yeah about five minutes or so, maybe a bit, little bit less, and it involves two things. First is an activating breath. So what we're actually doing is we're, we're, we're waking up the body. So we're really giving it a little shake up and saying, hello, um, let's introduce some energy into the system. So it's a very energizing breath. Um, and the second breath is a relaxing, balancing breath. And what we find when we have done some basic biofeedback um, measuring on these um these techniques, things like heart rate variability and basic EEG monitoring as well, is that after you do this um, energizing breath followed by this relaxing, balancing breath, it really puts you into a perfect state of I'm ready to intake information or I'm ready to to work or to concentrate on something. Um, That kind of low beta brainwave state where you're not in a state of stress, but you're also not too sleepy. Mm -hmm. So um, how it works the first breath I call the Energizer Bunny. And I call it the Energizer Bunny because we are all going to take three short, sharp inhales through the nose, progressively filling up our lungs. And so by the time you get to the third inhale, your lungs will feel, you know, maybe 90% full or so. And then you will just sigh out through the mouth. And we'll do it for about 30 seconds or so. Um, And it's at quite a fast pace. So I'll demonstrate it and you'll be able to hear it. 
it goes a little something like this. Three inhales through the nose, relaxed exhale through the mouth. So it's at quite a nice pace. And the important thing is that you're not exhaling in between the inhales. So you're progressively filling up your lungs after each inhale. So that's the Energizer Bunny. We'll do that for about 30 to 40 seconds. And then we're going to go into a very well-known technique, at least in the breathwork world, called coherence breathing. And coherence breathing was measured, was created um, out of a university in the States. I'm forgetting exactly which one it is. Um, but basically, they were trying to find out what is the ideal cadence of breath to increase something called heart rate variability, or HRV. And HRV is basically a really good measure of how flexible and balanced and robust your nervous system is. So if you're in a state of stress, your HRV is actually going to be quite low. But if you're in a place where your uh, nervous system can be very responsive and can move in from activation to relaxation and vice versa easily, then you'll have quite a high HRV. Mm -hmm. So this cadence of breath, which is six seconds in, six seconds out, all through the nose, um, was found to be the most effective breath to be able to increase HRV um, in the shortest amount of time. So we're going to do this coherence breathing straight after the Energizer Bunny, which is six seconds in through the nose, six seconds out. And for many people, uh, breathing in and out six seconds each way is going to be really challenging because it's quite a slow breath. Um, and the important thing is that you really, really focus on trying to ration the breath for the entire six seconds. That's kind of where the magic is. Um, you know, so if you find yourself, you know, on the inhale being completely full at four seconds and you just have to hold your breath for the final two seconds on the next inhale, see if you can slow it down even more so that you can be inhaling that entire way. And I think that's about it. So all Maybe right. we can get started. I'm going to mute, as everyone knows, I'm going to be here, but I don't want to just be, be <laughs> into the mic the entire time. <laughs> I'm ready, man. I'm ready. <laughs> ready. Great. Um, and one thing I'll very quickly say as well is if anyone is driving um, or operating machinery or something like that, or just if you're not in a safe space, uh, probably pause um, the podcast now and whenever you find, whenever you arrive home or if you just want to pull over, um, then you can resume because you probably don't want to be doing this while you're driving. So everyone sitting comfortably, close your eyes, get comfortable. And in a moment, we're going to start with our Energizer Bunny. Three inhales through the nose, nice and quick, relaxed exhale through the mouth. I will set a pace, so see if you can just stay with me. So I invite you now to exhale out. And here we go. So through the nose, in, 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 out the mouth. In, 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 out. Nose, 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 mouth. Nose, 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 mouth. In, 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 out. In, 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 out. In, 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 out. Nose, 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 mouth. Nose, 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 mouth. Now keep going. You have the pace. Now, if you're starting to feel a little lightheaded or a little spacey, that means you are doing it correctly. There's nothing unsafe about feeling a little lightheaded for just a few moments. It's perfectly fine. You are perfectly safe. It's safe to breathe in this way. Just a couple more. And then finishing the next breath you are on after the exhale, just relax and let the breath come and go naturally as it pleases because we will move now into our coherence breathing, which is a six second inhale through the nose followed by a six second exhale through the nose. So I invite you now to exhale out and we will begin together. So in two, three, four, five, six, out. Two, three, four, five, six. In. Two, three, four, five, six. Out. Two, three, four, five, six. In. Two, three, four, five, six. Out. Two, three, four, five, 
six, and now continue yourself counting in your head. And as you do this breath, I really want you to focus on making sure you are rationing out the breath the entire six seconds so that you are not inhaling too quickly. Maybe you'll find yourself becoming full at four seconds and you need to wait for the remaining two seconds. On the next inhale, it's all about focusing on slowing it down even more. And if this starts to feel relatively easy for you, then the next step is to see if you can slow it down even more so that once you get to the top of your inhale or the bottom of your exhale, it still feels like you have more to give or more to take in. So that if from a scale of one to 10, where your lungs being completely empty would be one and completely full will be 10, you are operating between this two to eight range. So never becoming completely full, never becoming completely empty, just hovering in between and seeing if you can do that comfortably. Nice and slow, gentle, easy, and effortless eventually, if it doesn't feel that way yet. Funnily enough, although we don't think of it, breathing can be a skill. It can be a behavior. It can be something that perhaps we have to practice and put a little bit of effort in in order to get it the way that we want to do it. So if this feels tricky to inhale for six seconds and exhale for six seconds, next time you practice it, try going down to five seconds or four seconds. Make that comfortable and then move back up. Just like learning anything new, it's all about taking comfortable baby steps in the right direction. And so maybe just finishing the next breath you're on and then breathing freely. And with your eyes closed, just notice if anything feels different in the body. If there's a different sensation. And whenever you feel ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the world of the senses. Mm, How so you doing? Good. It reminds, I mean, I, I can, I'm trying to put words to how I feel right now and I can't. <laughs> I'm just, I'm very here, um, if that makes sense. Um, and it feels like all of my senses are heightened. Mm, yeah. yeah. Like my periphery is bigger. Yeah. You know, it's that, that sense of presence of being completely here in the moment. And, you know, some people will also call that a flow state. Um, mm, so yeah, exactly. Really, yeah. 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 A really great little practice to do anytime you feel like you're, you feel like your mind's being pulled in all directions and you really need to just be here now. Mm. Just a, some energizer bunny followed by some coherence breathing is a great, great little recipe. And Richie, this is something we can do every day, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, when I first started doing breath work, I was doing close to an hour session every single day. I became a little bit obsessed. I have one of those personalities uh, where, <laughs> where I find something I like, I try to just jump all in. Um, Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, absolutely. You know, something like this, you can do multiple times per day. Um, you know, coherence breathing, actually they use it um, 
uh, in trauma centers uh, as a way to be able to recondition uh, traumatized nervous systems, essentially, um, to try and rebalance them. So people will be doing it for 15 minutes, four or five times a day. Um, and it really has incredible results. Amazing. Richie, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about getting the book and moving it up my book list. <laughs> <laughs> I want more of this. <laughs> <laughs> who needs to read that other garbage <laughs> yeah it's, at the, it's, but it's just breathing at the end of the day right so yeah. you know the cool yeah. thing about the book is that um you know it, it can it, you can approach it in a few different ways you know you can do, read it from start to finish but at the same time similar to like a cookbook or a recipe book you can kind of jump in and out um and just find the bits and pieces that are relevant for you at that time um and then just leave it in a place where it's accessible on your coffee table or wherever and just pick it up again and learn something new. Beautiful. Richie, I, I, uh, I just can't thank you enough for bringing your wisdom onto the show and your vast wealth of knowledge. And um, I can't wait to share with everybody where to catch you and where we can do more of this because this has been such a, a pleasurable experience. It's amazing. Uh, thanks so much, Danny. Well, thanks so much for having me on. And I'm so excited to um, hopefully come and see you soon too. Um, I, you're, you're, you're in SF, right? San Francisco. Yeah. I, um, yep. I have a few people there that are asking me to come. So I'll, uh, hopefully be over there whenever I'm allowed to. <laughs> basically. Yeah. We would love to have you, man. 100%. Yeah. We would love to have you here for sure. You can count on it. Oh, great. Well, until the next seeker and sage, this is Danny and Richie saying peace out. Thanks everyone. Be well. <laughs>